There are so many different jobs in the healthcare industry, but for some reason people really only talk about being doctors and nurses. So many people are pushed into becoming doctors because it's a really stable job with a high income. But the truth is that becoming a doctor takes a ton of work, and financially, it's not the best option. You miss out on 10 years of income before you even start earning good money. Plus, you go into hundreds of thousand dollars of debt. Nurses and doctors also have really stressful jobs and they have to work a ton of hours. I've had doctors tell me that if they knew of all their options beforehand, they never would have become doctors. And that says a lot. If you're like me and you want to work in healthcare because of the impact you can have on people, but you don't want to have a really stressful job and go in hundreds of thousand dollars of debt, then this video is going to be valuable to you. I'm going to talk about two high paying healthcare jobs you can get with only a bachelor's and what skills you need to get them. So let's get into it. Cheers! Hey everybody, my name is Hasham Khan and welcome to Income Over Outcome. There's no doubt that healthcare is one of the best industries to work in. It's the fastest growing industry in the country and it's by far the most stable. If you have a deep knowledge of anything healthcare, then you will always be valuable to our society. After all, our health is the most important thing we have. But that doesn't mean you need to be a doctor, nurse, or even someone who interacts with patients to have a true impact in health. Healthcare. Too many people only become doctors because of the money and they end up regretting it because most doctors don't start earning good money until their mid 30s when they're out of residency. And sure, eventually they end up earning over $200,000 but they also have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt back which can be crippling. That's why you should not become a doctor unless you're really committed to your patients and don't mind working really long hours. The healthcare careers I'm going to talk about right now are really good alternatives to becoming a doctor. They'll allow you to earn six figures way before your 30s and not have to go through a decade of schooling. The first career I'll talk about is healthcare consulting. Now this is something I've had a ton of questions on and honestly, I could talk about it for hours because I'm a healthcare consultant myself. Hospitals and other large medical institutions hire healthcare consultants to help them figure out how to solve their problems. A lot of what we do involves figuring out how a hospital can operate more effectively and saving them money. But really, we're here to help with any problem that a hospital might have. Let's say there's this insane global pandemic. Well, a hospital could hire healthcare consultants to help them figure out how to deal with more patients coming in. We could tell them what procedures it makes sense to stop doing so that they could make room for more patients. We could look at where exactly in the hospital all these new patients should go. You know, things like that. As consultants, we work very closely with healthcare administrators at every single level. As an entry-level consultant, you'll probably work mainly with managers and directors. But as you progress throughout your career, you'll get to work with C-suite members. The most glorified part of a healthcare consultant's job is the fact that we have to travel. Our clients can be anywhere in the country, which means we have to hop on planes to meet them every single week. That also means that you can basically live wherever you want as long as you're close to a major airport. Consultants tend to be on the client site from Mondays through Thursdays. So basically my weekly routine is hopping on a plane Monday morning, landing and meeting my coworkers, and then we all go to the client site together where we have meetings throughout the week. Thursday, I come back home. If you want to become a consultant, you're going to need to grow to love airport lounges and sleeping in hotels. Now, a lot of people I know absolutely love this lifestyle because it has some great perks and you get to work with some great people. But honestly, it's not for everybody. Some people get really burned out with all the travel. So it's something that you should consider. Now, if you want, I could make a travel vlog whenever I start traveling again to kind of show you what the consultant lifestyle is like. Just let me know down below. Consulting firms love to hire people straight out of undergrad because they get to train them exactly how they need. Plus, it's really easy to find a college kid who wants to travel so much. Because a lot of consulting is learned on the job, there's not really a specific major we look for, but I would say the most common majors amongst my coworkers are business and some sort of health sciences degree. I myself have a healthcare management degree, but as long as you can show you want to have a strong impact in healthcare and you have basic consulting skills, then you'll be a strong candidate. 
In your cover letter and eventually interview, you really need to talk about why you want to work in healthcare, what impact you want to have, and you should be keeping up with healthcare trends so that you can talk about that. I never had any consulting experience before getting this job, but really that doesn't matter since you can learn consulting skills in basically any job. You just need to show that you have these skills. Pull examples on stories from all your different jobs and internships to show that you can solve problems, think critically, and communicate your thoughts effectively. You also need to be really good at Microsoft Excel and creating formulas, because as an entry-level consultant, your main role is going to be working with large data sets, interpreting them, and making them easy to digest for your client. The key to becoming a healthcare consultant is to get internships that give you the consulting skills that I talked about earlier. Most healthcare consulting firms have internships, and I also know of a few that have programs designed for underclassmen. So if you're interested, this is a really good way to get your foot in the door. Even if you don't get an internship in consulting, that's fine because you can talk about your experiences and how they translate over to consulting, just like I did. Most of these jobs are fulfilled by referrals. So it's also really important that you go ahead and network. My favorite way to do this is with LinkedIn. All you have to do is search people who graduated from your school and are in healthcare consulting right now. Then send them a message. I sent an ungodly amount of DMs when I was looking for a job in college. And while most people don't respond, the few that do offer really valuable advice. If you get hired straight out of undergrad at 22 years old, then your starting salary will probably be around $80,000. Now most people get promoted two years after that and would be earning around $100,000 and then two to three years after that, you could expect to make around $120,000. By 30 years old, you can easily be earning upwards of 150 grand, which is amazing. That's when a lot of people in consulting choose to exit because they start having families and don't want to travel as much. So they end up working at high level management positions in hospitals. Even though being in your early 30s is still fairly young to get these positions at hospitals, consultants experiences are really valuable to a hospital because they work on so many different projects solving so many different problems. They say that one year in consulting is equivalent to five years in the real industry. But really the longer you choose to stay in consulting and the more your career progresses, the more you're going to earn, with top consultants earning upwards of 500 grand. The second career I'm talking about today are medical sales reps. Now just like the name says, this is a sales job. You would work for a company that makes medical supplies and then travel around the country meeting doctors and administrators, convincing them to buy whatever you're selling. Now what you're selling totally depends on what company you're working for. It could be everything from healthcare software to biotechnology to pharmaceutical products. Pay for biotech and pharma sales reps tend to be on the higher end, but on average, medical sales reps earn around $150,000 a year. Most companies will pay you with a base salary plus a commission which would make up the majority of your pay. Now a lot of people like this because it means that the better you are at your job, the more money you'll be making. A degree that gives you a business background plus a healthcare background would really give you a leg up in being a medical sales rep. Business degrees with a health sciences minor or healthcare administration are some really good options, but there's a lot of degrees you could choose from, so just do what works best for you. To be a medical sales rep, you need to have solid sales skills and I would say this field is more competitive than consulting because sales in general is pretty hard but it could also be really rewarding. It's a little harder to land this job straight out of undergrad with no experience because sales is something that takes years to learn. Most companies want at least one year of solid sales experience but that's not to say it's impossible to land this job. If you could get a solid sales internship while you're still in school, then you could be a really strong candidate. Honestly, some other industries are easier to break into than medical sales. Personally, I work in insurance and that taught me a lot about sales. As long as you can prove you've worked in sales before and have actually increased sales for a company, then you have a solid chance. There are also a handful of companies that offer medical sales internships. So if you're interested in joining this field, then you should really 
really apply to literally dozens of these because it's a really good way to get your foot in the door. Whatever medical sales company you apply to, make sure you research them and what they sell. Being able to talk about products is key to this job. So if you're able to do this effectively in your interview or cover letter, then it's going to set you apart from other people. You should also have a good story as to why you want to work in medical sales. It could be that you find medical technology really cool and you want a job where you get to interact with people. As long as you can show you communicate effectively, can think fast, and can be knowledgeable about the products you're selling, then you can show you're a solid sales rep. Like I talked about with consulting, networking is really important. So you should definitely be using LinkedIn, but also look into joining the National Association for Medical Device Representatives. I have a link to their website down below and they have a ton of really good resources, like a list of universities that offer degrees that will help you get into medical sales. That's all I have for you today. I hope you were able to learn something. If you enjoyed this, let me know because I don't usually make content like this, but I can definitely start making more of this if enough people want it. Just let me know down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and I'll be sure to answer any questions and comments you have. I'll see you in my next video but until then take care. Cheers!